Hey girl, what's up? It's Just Jay here. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, grab yourself a cup of coffee and welcome to the fam. I make faith-related videos all about how we can practically be godly women in the 21st century. Today's video is going to be the second part of my fasting video and I will be talking all about all the different types of fasting that you get, how long you should fast, the right and the wrong way to fast, how you can make it part of your lifestyle, just a couple of practical tips to help you out not only the spiritual benefits but also the physical health benefits that it has and at the end I will be reading a couple of testimonies about people who fasted and the amazing miracles and the breakthroughs that happened in their life haven't watched the first part of this video I would highly highly recommend that you quickly go and watch that first it's only 10 minutes so it's not gonna take up much of your time in that video I just tell you exactly what a scripture say about fasting what exactly fasting is and why it is actually such a necessity in our lives if we call ourselves Christians so let's go the different types of fasting that you get there is many different kinds of fasting that is mentioned in the Bible Joshua fasted for 40 days Daniel fasted partially for 21 days. Apostle Paul did one fast of three days and then he did another fast of 14 days and Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. But if we go look at what scripture says about fasting, we come to the conclusion that there are mainly three types of fasting. The first type of fasting is absolute fast and this is your most difficult fast. Then you will get your normal fast, which is kind of like a medium type of fast. And then you will get your partial fast, which is the most easiest fast out of all of these. An absolute fast is one of your most difficult fasts. If you are a beginner and you haven't fasted a day in your life, I wouldn't recommend that you take on this type of fast at the beginning. This is a period of time where you don't take in any food or any water. And I think the maximum time I've heard somebody doing this was three days. Then your normal kind of fasting is a fast where you are allowed to drink water, but you refrain from eating any food. So this is more of a medium type of fast and the maximum amount of time I've heard somebody do this was 56 days then you get your partial fast which is your easiest fast so partial fast can be interpreted in more than one ways so I've heard people that they only fast for a certain time of the day so between six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night they don't eat anything or they only eat certain types of food they cut out sugar or they cut out meat so they partially fast and I think the most popular type of partial fast that we read about in scripture is the Daniel's fast. So this is basically when for 21 days you only eat whole grains, vegetables and fruit and you drink nothing but water. And this is the type of fast that I would recommend for beginners to start with if you haven't fasted before ever. Then how long should you be fasting? There is no specific length or amount of times that you should fast or allow to fast. I don't think we should get caught up in the details too much. I think the length of your fast and the amount of times that you fast is highly going to depend on the situation that you're in. So let's say somebody has cancer and you are fasting for healing for this person, you're probably going to fast a lot longer and many more amounts of times than you would fast if you were fasting, for example, to stop being jealous or to stop swearing. Basically, the more worse your situation is and the more desperate you are to hear the Lord's voice, that is basically going to determine how long you fast and the amount of times that you fast. How do you do it? How do you make it part of your life? lifestyle, how do you start? These are just a few practical guidelines to help you fast the right way if you have never fasted before in your entire life. Firstly, if this is your first time fasting, don't bite off more than you can chew. You don't have to start off with a 40 day no eat fast if you haven't fasted a day before in your life. If you are a beginner and you haven't fasted before, I would suggest that you start off with the 21 day Daniel's fast where you only eat whole grain vegetables, fruits, and drink water. Or you can just decide on partially fasting. So you say, okay, I'm going to cut out meat for a week or I'm going to cut out sugar for a week. And it might not sound like much, but when it comes to fasting, you just have to remember that if it means something to you, it's going to mean something to God. And if it doesn't mean anything to you, then it is not going to mean anything to God. God sees that sacrifice and that sacrifice means something to him, even though it may look stupid to you or it may look stupid to 
to people around you. Then the second thing, you have to pair fasting with prayer. And I can't stress this enough. Fasting without prayer is not fasting. It is starvation or it is dieting, but it is not fasting if you are not praying continuously throughout your fast. And yes, some days you are going to feel like heaven is opening up to you and God himself is in the room with you. And other days, you're simply just not going to have the energy. You are going to feel irritated. You're going to feel tired. You're probably going to have a headache and you're just going to want to sleep. And I just want to say, don't condemn yourself for those days. Those days are a normal part of fasting. God still sees your sacrifice. It's not about following certain rules. It is not about fasting is this. Ta -ta 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 -ta. It is about making some sort of sacrifice food related so that your spirits can be more sensitive to God's voice. The third thing that I wouldn't recommend is to spend a lot of time on social media or in the television in this time period where you always see these ads of steamy hot cheeseburgers popping up. Why tempt yourself even more as it is? Then the fourth thing I would say is that if you know that you are going to go on a fast, don't gorge yourself with food the day right before you go on your fast because you want to enjoy your last day. Prepare your body for fasting. A week before you have to either go on the Daniel's fast or even doing an absolute fast where you're not going to eat or drink anything, prepare your body for it. So start eating smaller portions of food a week before. Start by already cutting out sugar a week before. Only drinking one cup of coffee a day the week before. If you prepare your body for fasting, it'll make the transition of going into the fast so much easier and you're probably going to have a lot less side effects. The fifth thing that I would recommend is if you are doing a fast where you can drink water, drink lots and lots and lots of water. It really does help with the hunger pains and it really does help to flush out all the toxins from your body. If it's your first time doing a normal fast where you drink water but you don't eat anything, I would recommend that you try and make yourself a vegetable broth that you can drink. It really just makes the fast a little bit easier if it is your first time. The sixth thing that I would say is that before you go into the fast, clearly decide what it is that you are fasting for. When you fast, you can target specific praying areas in your life. And I'm not saying that God cannot work with you on other things during this time. God can still lead you in your fast, maybe show you something completely different that is not excluded. The best motivation is good reasons. So if you go into a fast and you have a specific thing, a specific goal in mind, a specific topic, and you know, I'm going to stick with this until God gives me an answer, you are more likely to pull through with the fast than you would if you walked in there and you're like, oh, well, I'm going to fast. Don't really know what for. Just see where it leads me because because there's no motivation for you. There's no end goal. There's no reason for you to fast. Then the seventh thing, fasting must have to do with food. So I've heard people say a lot, oh, I'm fasting my phone for a week or I'm fasting social media for a month. And you know what? It's great. You are supposed to leave things behind that is taking away time from God, but this is not considered fasting. You can do this and fast from food, but you can't do this instead of fasting for food. There is never going to be a right time or a perfect time or a good time to fast. There's always going to be something. There's always going to be a birthday party or someone you need to drink coffee with. Just pick a date and start. The timing is never going to be right. Trust me. If you fast, don't make a big deal out of it. The Bible says this as well. Don't walk around with a sad face telling everybody, oh, I'm on a fast and I'm fasting because that defies the whole purpose and it means absolutely nothing to God because if you're doing it to show to other people what a good Christian you are, or to get other people's approval, then it means absolutely nothing and you might as well just stop while you're at it. Dress up, put on makeup, go out, live your life as you would normally and don't make a big fuss out of it. Then I am just going to have to warn you that you are going to experience quite a lot of side effects and one of the big ones is headaches. And no, it is not the devil giving you headaches because he wants you to stop fasting. It is probably just from a caffeine withdrawal or from sugar withdrawal, especially if you have a very unhealthy diet in your normal life. You are going to feel sluggish, you're going to feel tired, you're going to feel irritated, you're going to be very, very hungry, you're going to struggle to sleep. You are probably going to have such bad body aches. Guys, I did the Daniel's fast maybe like a month ago and my body hurt 
so bad. My kidney and my legs hurt so bad that I almost didn't sleep for the first three days of the fast. And then another thing is you're probably going to pee a lot. I don't know why, I just found that I peed very much. And you're probably going to poop a lot less. And if you poop, it's probably going to be diarrhea. I don't know why. I think your body's cleaning itself. It's probably the toxins being released, but that's definitely going to happen. I have experienced every single one of these side effects when I fast, so I can confirm that they absolutely do happen. So these side effects usually last for about three to four days, four days max. I just wanna tell you, don't be too hard on yourself. Your body is still getting used to the fast. You're still getting accustomed to it. So you're not gonna hear violence. You're not gonna see angels or anything like that. You're gonna be super irritated, super tired, super super hungry. Don't condemn yourself and don't condemn the fast because you're not immediately feeling this, oh my goodness, God, I love you so much because you're not going to feel that. Then I quickly also just want to mention that there is not only spiritual benefits that comes with fasting, but there's also a lot of physical health benefits that comes with fasting. So if you go Google it, you will find a lot of information on it. have faith and be patient. So we all did this experiment in school where you had to take a little bean and you had to plant it, you had to water it and you had to watch it grow. But all of us became impatient. I know I became very impatient. Everybody else's beans were growing and you were looking at it and you were like, well, why is my bean not growing? And then you dig in your fingers and you rip out the bean just to see that there was a little sprout forming, but you destroyed the harvest because you just ripped out your bean. And I think this is what we do with our faith so many times in our lives. God maybe planted a seed in your heart. So maybe he revealed your purpose to you or he is calling you to go do something specific. But now it is not happening fast enough according to us. We start to question it. We start to become impatient. We start to doubt. We're like, should God even really tell me that this is my purpose? Is this my goal? And then what we do is we take our fingers and we dig it into the ground and we rip out that bean because we don't see anything growing. When it's too late, you see that there was a little sprout starting to grow. Just because you can't see the sprout that is forming out of the bean and everybody else's beans are growing and you see the plants and the fruits doesn't mean that yours are not growing. Faith and patience have to go together. There's this piece, we all heard it before where Jesus says, if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. We always think that to achieve things in our life, we have to have these great amounts of faith. We have to have a lot of faith. But Jesus said, no, if you only have a little faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Even if you have been praying and fasting for something specific and you don't see any breakthroughs happening, don't give up. Don't rip out the seed. Just because it seems like nothing is happening doesn't mean that nothing is happening. Then the last thing that I would just like to leave you with is that you have to remember God's priorities and your priorities are two very, very different things. Many, many times during a fast, God will probably give you what you need and not necessarily what you want. And again, I talk out of experience of this one. I did the Daniel's fast about a month month ago for this channel of mine. I started the fast by praying about my channel, asking God for the purpose, asking him to reveal what he wants me to do with this channel. And that entire fast, God only worked with me on forgiveness. This doesn't mean that God didn't care about what I want or what my heart's desires were. It's just that he realized there was something more important in my life at this moment that needed attention. Okay, I'm quickly going to read you a couple of testimonies of people who fasted and the amazing miracles and breakthroughs that happen in their life because of it. I have never completed a fast of this length, but using this book really helped me to remain steadfast. I heard God clearer than I've ever heard him and my life will never ever be the same. This was a very cool testimony to me. Our son is 19 years old and was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at the age of five. Recently, he was admitted to the hospital because his oxygen level had fallen to 70%. About a week after the fast ended, he turned critical and I was notified that his lungs could fail at any moment. I immediately called my husband, spiritual friends and family. I called a solemn assembly of prayer and fasting for 24 hours beginning at 5 p.m. that Thursday until 5 p.m. Friday. Needless to say, 4 p.m. Friday, the 23rd hour of the fast, my son's carbon dioxide test came back normal. There was nothing the medical doctor could do. God is faithful. I'm so thankful. This is also a cool testimony. I did my first 21 day fast after seeing Pastor Franklin's teaching. I believe the Lord told me I would be fasting for my sick 
father who was not yet a believer. I felt I had a promise from God that my dad would not leave this earth without my knowing he is saved. Nearly three months after the fast, my dad died. But as the Lord promised, three days before his death, he assured me that he had asked Jesus into his heart. I also fasted for my 22-year-old prodigal daughter who walked away from the Lord when she was 18 years old. I began this year with the 21-day Daniel's fast, again with my daughter as my focus. I recently heard from my daughter. She wanted to tell me that she's coming to church on Easter Sunday. It'll be the first time in four and a half years. The Lord confirmed that this has occurred as a result of my fast. I'm making fasting a discipline in my life. Somewhere in this book, I've also read a story about a mother. She did the normal fast for three days because her daughter had cancer. And after that three days, her daughter was healed from cancer because she fasted. I'm like getting goosebumps as I'm talking about this. This just shows us that you don't have to only fast for yourself. You can fast for other people's lives as well. If you have someone that you know that is not saved, like a parent or a sister, you can fast for them. If you have someone that is suffering from mental illness or have a certain incurable disease, like let's say cancer, you can fast for their healing. You Again, I just want to say, if you haven't watched part one of this video, I would highly recommend that you watch that. I explain what a scripture say about fasting, who fasted in the Bible, why they fasted, what fasting actually is, and why it is such a necessity. If you call yourself a Christian, you have to fast. That is my story for today. If you like this type of content and what I have to say, please subscribe down below and follow all my social media links in the description. You're also more than welcome to DM me on Instagram for more personal chats about life. Thank you for being part of the family. I look so forward to seeing you next Saturday.